Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, your weekly Coach's Call. I am here with the beard. The uh, starting to grow back. Big boy. It's starting to grow back quickly, yeah. Almost as quick as mine. Whose uh, birthday it was yesterday. Yeah. yeah. How'd you, did you have a good day? Yeah, 35, man. Unbelievable. Yeah, that time's gone, mate. Still a youngster. Still a youngster, mate. I'll be there before we know it. Yeah, I know. I mean, you're just 30, aren't you? I am. Mm. But that was last July, so I'm literally like half a year away from turning 31. <laughs> Where's that time gone? I know. You'd have thought time would go slower in a pandemic. If anything, it's going faster. Yeah. I actually think July went quite quickly. Usually July goes quite slowly and kind of feels a bit, you know, draggy. But actually... um yeah, actually went do, you mean, quite do you mean January or? Sorry, yeah, January, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> you said July. Yeah, yeah. January. I, I know what you mean. Yeah, people were like, "Oh, this is the longest year ever," and I was like, "Is it already February?" Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I thought I thought it, it raced by, but uh, yeah. Hey ho, there we go. <laughs> so we're talking today, guys, about uh, you know setting behavior goals in terms of staying consistent and why that it actually you know pays dividends versus doing other things that we might like or have been told to do in the past. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about measuring progress beyond the scale as well, so knowing that you're doing the right thing, because I know that that can trip a lot of people up. Uh, and then any other kind of questions or, or hot topics or debates that, that might come in. So, I mean, first off, I guess, you know, I'll, I'll throw the ball in your court, Sean behavior-based goals you know what would be our best reason in why why we start there and i seem to have lost sean's connection i don't know why might just remove him from the stream for a second and let him uh, come back in. Uh, I might just kick him from the studio and then we'll let him come back in. So behavior-based goals, what do we mean by them? First of all, might be the best thing. So when we're looking to set goals for nutrition, for fitness, for weight loss, for health, a lot of the time we are focused on our outcome. Right, we're focused on I want to get to this weight or I want to look like this or I want to be able to achieve X goal. And that's all well and good. But the issue with an outcome based goal is that it is directly outside of our control. Right. We can't control whether we drop body fat or not. We can't control whether we are the best or not. We can only control our behaviors, which we can lead to a certain goal. And the beard is back. Hello, mate. Maybe it is my Wi-Fi, that's crap, not yours. No, don't worry. So behavior-based goals, I was just giving a definition of those versus outcome-based goals. And why would you say that our behaviors, well, why set behavior-based goals, right? Um, yeah, because outcome goals can often um, lead to, you know, you have like success sometimes with outcome-based goals, but a lot of time you, you lead to more perceived failures and behavior goals um because there's mm -hmm. a lot of pressure on it it's like if you put that kind of outcome goal of um i'm going to lose 14 pounds in 14 weeks it's like that's a very outcome based goal whereas if you say like over the next 14 weeks i'm going to you know um five days a week i'm going to eat more vegetables and fewer chocolate bars or something like that it's more of a behavior based thing than it is a outcome outcome driven thing so you're, you're less likely to think well i failed you can just think like well okay I, d I didn't do that today but i'm gonna do it tomorrow you know whereas if you do whereas if you don't lose one pound in that in that one week oh shit uh, i failed everything i'm gonna have to eat less now or you know change this and change that because i failed and blah 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 so there's a lot of pressure to put on outcome based goals yeah the pressure is worse and you can't control the outcome only your action is what I spoke about just while you were out of the, the stream. Mm -hmm. And I guess the biggest criticism was criticism would probably be, well, that's too slow. You know, setting that behavior goal is too slow. It's too small of a change. And what would you say about that? Well, generally outcome based goals are um, short, short term, right? Like, 
um, you know, it's with the whole kind of weight loss thing. If you do an outcome based goal of I'm going to lose this amount of weight in this period of time, what happens after? Do you then go back to how you were before? Have your behaviors mm-hmm. changed or, or have you just set this goal and then you've changed without thinking about it, you've changed your behaviors, um, you've been restrictive or whatever it might be, but um, it's, it, it's a short term thing, right? Whereas if, if you change your behaviors, that can last forever. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So you've got, you've got more chance of long-term success, I think, with behavior-based goals than you do with an outcome-based goal. Because if you're just focusing on that outcome and that's it, then you're not, giving, you're not necessarily changing the way you behave. And mm. that's what's going to give you long-term success. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of the time we want results quickly and that allows us to think, right, well, we'll make all of these dramatic changes in our lives. But really what happens then is that it just, it just trips us up and we think, well, we're not able to maintain that higher level of effort. And then we feel like we've failed. We feel like we've not done our job or our mm. duty with regards to that. And then we think, well, what's the point? You know, we might as well, yeah. might as well sabotage ourselves because we've not lived up to this really difficult expectation. Yeah. I think the same thing happens when people try to be too strict with their, well, I know it happens when people try to be too strict with their food intake, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because are you going to live like that for the rest of your life? Probably not. So, you know, set outcome based goal. And don't get me wrong, I, I do, there is something to be said for, you know, using diets in a, in a proper way, as in they are a short term thing. But that's, that's mm-hmm. the whole point of it, right? That's why it's an outcome based thing. It's like, I'm going to lose this much weight by then. Um, it's still a, it's, it's a short-term strategy. It's like tracking is a short-term thing. It's a short-term strategy. It shouldn't be a, a lifelong thing that you do because the behavior of tracking all of your food for the rest of your life isn't a healthy behavior, I, I, I don't think. No. Because um, you lose the intuitiveness of what hunger feels like and you, know, you lose that kind of, yeah, just the intuitive of, of yourself needing something like tracking for the rest of your life. Mm. Well, and I found that with, there's a, a, a bit of joke against the whole like intuitive eating movement of like, oh yeah, well, I'll just intuitively eat five Mars bars or whatever, but that's not then intuitive eating, no. right? It's not what, what we mean by it. It's not what they mean by it. It's not, you're not eating intuitively if you're doing that because intuitively you wouldn't want to do that, right? It's actually a case mm-hmm. of you're not, your body isn't telling you to do that that's your brain and your behaviors and your sabotage mode telling you to do that. Not actually, Oh, what would make me feel good and yeah. what would satisfy my hunger and things like that. When you really connect to those, sometimes it is about having a small bit of chocolate, but other times it's, it's definitely not about having like five miles bars. Well, you've, you said it there with the sabotage thing, like, like sabotage is a behavioral thing, right? Like mm. it's, you've, you've gone, well, I've, I've, I've had this, and so now I'm just going to have the whole weekend of like overindulgence and, and you, you sabotage everything. So if, say for weight loss, if you just decided to change that behavior of sabotage, you might actually lose weight without even like that being the goal. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You might, because you won't sabotage anymore. Um, once you've got that down and, and you don't sabotage anymore, you'll, you'll be able to have some chocolate without going off. Oh, I've, I've now sabotaged my whole diet, so I might as well just do this, right? Mm-hmm. Just changing that sabotage behavioral behavioral thing can bring you lifelong results. Yeah, so that's a massive thing. I think that's what lets most people down is the sabotage aspect of trying to be too perfect or too strict, and then or not seeing the progress, and then thinking, well, it's not working, so I'll do. I might as well throw the towel in and eat everything to to my heart's content and that's it's from years of dieting as well Mm. because the the dieting that brings restriction on makes you then rebel even more with more of those foods that you never had Mm -hmm. which is why we're so big on inclusivity and that 80 20 rule Mm -hmm. i think it would be good to talk about measuring progress beyond the scale i know for me i i help clients look at not only measurements and photos because they are valid but also Mm -hmm. the way that people feel 
do they feel better do they feel more energized are they the way that they're behaving with their habits are they more aware of their their cravings are they eating more toward their natural cues are they stopping food sooner eating more veggies because those are all progress markers to be celebrated right yeah i think you know weight is the number one thing that people look at when they think about losing fat or they think they don't look good or whatever it is right they think well i need to lose weight mm. and that's the only metric that they look at is in terms of the scale um and you've touched upon it there like measurements matter as well you know like because you could not lose any weight but lose a bunch of fat um you know if you if you're still retaining muscle or building muscle right mm. um that's, that's a very real thing that people need to kind of realize um and i just say photos you know and then was, even when you said there with how they're feeling sleep stuff like that. are they sleeping better because they're eating less highly highly processed foods at night and stuff like that you know have their habits changed in that respect um do they feel more confident in themselves uh, are they smashing the training sessions so, like all of those things that people don't they don't even like compute it it's just it's, it's almost like it's a, it's a byproduct of them losing weight mm. whereas it should be the other way around it should be like that all of your all these things are changing so you're sleeping more you're training harder um you're eating healthier and you're losing weight as a byproduct of that rather than mm. all those other things being the byproducts of you of you losing weight on the scale yeah exactly that's a really great way to put it people are thinking like oh well i'll feel better once i've lost weight but actually you'll feel better because you're doing things with your behaviors that are important mm. to you and that's the more important thing like if you notice that you're doing more behaviors that you wanted to focus on that's a win that's mm. an improvement if you yeah. focus that you're sleeping better all of those things are great progress markers they might not be there at first but they definitely will be over time and it's kind of digging yourself into the long haul and thinking, well, the only thing I have control over are my behaviors. And as long as I am strict with, well, not strict, as long as I'm compliant with those and I can say that I've done my best, then the results will come. If they don't, that's when you can think about changing the plan. But too mm. often that plan gets changed far too soon, especially yeah. when it comes to body composition changes. Yeah, people give up on stuff too easy and go back to old habits of like, you know, major restriction and all that kind of stuff. I had a discussion with Sush yesterday about tracking again because she wants to go back to tracking. She was like, well, I've tried I tried the hunger thing and it hasn't worked, so I want to try tracking again. And I'm like, but did you really try it though? Did you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, did you, you know, have you just told yourself that you've been trying it? Because I'm sure you weren't hungry for that, you know, those Mr. Kipling cakes at 10 o'clock last night. You just wanted that. Do you know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> are you really trying to do these things and uh, same with me it's the same, same thing with myself you know I've, I've been trying to do the the hunger game and stuff and i still sometimes go this isn't working i'm just going back to tracking mm -hmm. it's just that you just revert to those those things because you because it takes time for these things to kick in mm -hmm. but you know you can get like fast fast results by going to some crazy deficit or whatever it might be you know yeah which could be hard to resist because then it's, but then you might get into that. Oh, I've tracked all week and I've hit a really low calorie deficit. I deserve to treat myself. Yeah. And then, a, and then a cheat day can turn into a cheat weekend. And then you're kind of back in that cycle. Oh, well, I'll just eat less today and I'll just fast or whatever. You know, like I'll just fast for two days and then I'll be fine. It's, yeah. You get back into those extremes rather than the moderation. Yeah. And for people watching this who are in the membership site, then tracking is definitely something to try if you've never done it because it's a great way to educate yourself it's a great way to yep. be aware of portion sizes it's a great way to say okay well this is the amount that i can eat and still make progress or this okay well that's actually how many calories were in that portion of food that's you know oh wow that's actually a 30 gram serving of cereal you know it's those kind of uh, realizations that don't don't come unless you've done that but for many people like you and i sean and people who are in here you've tried tracking and are here because you're wanting a more sustainable approach that, that yeah. works. And as you said, tracking works as long as you do it, you then need to build that awareness around not doing it. Mm. So the hunger scale is great. We've worked with many people in this group on, on that. And the, 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 the sheet is there in our sort of resource folder for people to grab if they need to. And, it's definitely that balance you said between hunger and craving is, is one of the key ones. Yeah. Yeah. 
and it is generally cravings that you know if you're eating something after you've had dinner and you know you're full and you're just eating because you're it's a habit that you've got accustomed to sitting in front of the tv that's that's not hunger is it it's, it, it, it's a craving or it's a habit that's okay. Mm. Be aware of that. That's fine. But just, but just be aware of it. Make sure you know that. Don't mix it up with being hungry, right? Mm. You know, don't fall into uh, that trap of like, oh, maybe I'm just still a bit peckish. Maybe I don't eat enough for dinner. I'm just, you know, <laughs> I just need a snack. And you know, a thousand calories later. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a real thing that hunger through, um, through habit and behaviour. Because I know for me, if I'm watching TV at night after having dinner i'm like oh, i'm getting a bit hungry and we'll get the stomach rumbling mm. but it's purely because of the habit of having something at that time yeah. and usually if i get up and do something it goes away yeah. uh, i do sometimes well most of the time have something small at that window like a mousse or a small bit of chocolate or something like that because i do believe in having things like that regularly mm-hmm. but it is one of those where maybe i could eat lower in the day or eat a bit less in the day knowing I was doing that, be okay being a bit hungry during the day, not having an afternoon snack type thing because of that situation. And then you're just making different decisions based on what you might want or what you think is going to help keep you adherent. Because I definitely think having something of that ilk on a daily, semi-daily basis helps because then you get out of that really strict, really rigid versus all or nothing approach to food, which so many people find themselves with. Yeah, I think you have to be be, be very self aware and self regulating with, with with this kind of stuff. Like, yeah. um, you know, this kind of thing, you shouldn't be doing it if you have a really bad relationship with food. Yeah. Um, then, do you know what I mean there needs to be some kind of intervention there, or maybe a you know something else? But if if you have a good relationship with food, you should be able to do these kind of things of like, you know, I'm going to skip breakfast today because I'm going to have a roast dinner tonight. But I'm not skipping it because I'm being restrictive. I'm skipping it because I'm just being like I know that you know I can go I, I can go hungry for a few hours without thinking that I'm being restrictive or feeling guilty about it when I then do eat a big meal at night. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, so being self aware and self regulatory that with that kind of thing, your emotions around food is uh, something to like delve into as well. Mm. And it's a tough balance, I think, Matt, versus the whole. I want to honor my hunger and eat till satisfaction versus the planned. Okay. Well, I'm going to ignore my hunger here in order to, cause I know that I I'm having a big meal later and I want to be able to eat slightly beyond my hunger cues because there's mm. going to be food that I enjoy. And you can still then say, as you said, Sean, if you're in, in control of a relationship with food, I think you can then say that's okay because I'm still not going to go, mental with it i'm just going to have a larger than normal plate i won't have a second plate and i'll have one serving of dessert rather than five yeah versus yeah. the whole oh well it's a cheat day so i'm going to obliterate everything in front of me yeah it, it's also knowing then as well that you know it's going to talk about that relationship with food and the healthy relationship with the scale as well is that it's knowing that if you do overeat slightly in that evening meal you might put on water weight the next day do you know what I mean like it's it's knowing that, that that's not going to freak you out I'm not having that in your mind of kind of like well oh if I eat this meal I'm going to put on weight so like, well you're not you can just maybe just you know have some water weight and intestinal food weight and all that kind of stuff it's like um just just knowing that as well and having that kind of education around that kind of thing definitely helps it's helpful yeah cool all right then guys well there's 20 minutes for a video footage to watch back uh, as i said we're going to do a poll we're going to find out a better time for people to be more present here because we we want these to be as useful for you guys as we feel they can be and are um and but to summarize things behavior goals are better than outcome goals it's good to have both because the outcome will, will dictate what your behaviors are but you're only ever in control of your behaviors so don't freak out if your outcome goal isn't moving in the right direction particularly if that's body weight, because there are other things that you can measure, like your uh, ability to to follow your habits, the other feelings of energy, vitality, measurements, photos. If you're putting muscle on, then your body weight won't change despite you losing body fat. So it's good to keep that in mind. And in terms of hunger, appetite, tracking, there's a whole host of things that you can do there, but definitely 
trying to build your internal cues of hunger and appetite are a good idea and then improving your relationship with food to allow a balanced intake will then allow you that good 80 20 between sort of nutrient dense food and the other stuff that we like to preach here at nsn cool we'll talk to you soon guys take care guys